This is the Palin Update on Sarah Net Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. The governor's dad is here, Chuck Heath Sr., who along with Chuck Jr. has written the book, Our Sarah, Made in Alaska. We get the thoughts of a man who's known Sarah Palin her whole life. We are so excited to have Mr. Chuck Heath Sr. here on the Palin Update on Sarah Net Radio. Welcome, sir. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. So what's it like being Sarah Palin's dad? <laughs> I'm, it's kind of uh, over, overwhelming lately. Um, this this is something that happens to the guy down the street, you know, not me. Cause we're more or less a common, ordinary family, and when she hit the uh, spotlight, I just kind of was bewildered for a long time. A lot of this still hasn't sunk, uh, sunk in, Kevin. I think I addressed that, addressed that in uh, the book, Our Sarah. You sure did, and you know, you had this wonderful opportunity to write a book about her along with your son, Chuck Jr. What was this experience like? You Heaths have lived quite a life. Well, yeah, we're, <laughs> it's not a sedentary life uh, by any means. It's a life of uh, adventure, one, one after another. I think we do more in a week or two than most people do in a year or even in a lifetime, but that's, that's been our way, our way of life. I've been I've enjoyed um, writing this with Chuck because we've uh, reminisced about our past so much and uh, lots of smiles, lots of laughter <laughs> went into this book. Did you see something special in Sarah at an early age? I know a lot of parents, you know, they say this and that about their son and daughter. I'm going through it now with very little ones, but you know, <laughs> di- you know, but you, you know, you have the proof here. So you know, in retrospect, do you remember thinking that at all? Well, you know, there's three questions commonly asked of us. I mean, hundreds of times. Number one is, what's her game plan? We don't know. Number two is what you just said. Did we see this coming? And I'd like to say, oh, yeah, I saw her when she was jumping around her crib, but absolutely (laughs) not. Absolutely not. I did notice when about in the fourth grade she read the newspaper all the time. And um, I would read the sports page, and she'd grab the front section, and then she'd ask me questions about certain articles. And uh, that's where I first got my inkling that, uh, well, she's interested in more things besides sports and and, uh, gold panning and fishing and things like that. And what's it like for you and your wife, Sally, to see your daughter Sarah become such an influential person and a role model to so many people? Well, needless to say, we're very, very proud. Yeah, very, very proud. And uh, I heard Chuck Jr. say something about uh, it kind of hurts us when uh, people that don't even know her or know us uh, knock us. Um, The newspaper up here has been terrible on uh, um, negative things. In fact, we don't even read the newspaper up here anymore. But um, generally, to answer your question, we are just extremely proud. Religion is something you tackle in the book, Christians for sure, but it's not that simple. The Heaths have had quite a journey when it comes to faith. Can you give listeners a glimpse of the role faith has played in your family's life? Well, she got most of her faith and her guidance from her mom. Her mom isn't a religious nut or anything like that. She's just a devout Christian, and she passed that on to all of, all of her children. In the book, um, uh, our Sarah, I comment that my God is the same God you have, but it's in the God of the mountains, the God of the streams, the God of the uh, forest. And uh, we, I pass that on to the kids, too. And even today, they all go to church um, reverently, and uh, they'll continue doing this, I'm sure. You really took a different kind of leap of faith, if you will, when you packed up the family and moved to Alaska. What a bold move there. Well, that was a, a dream for years and years and years. I would have come up sooner, but I couldn't afford to afford to move. <laughs> sure. I was uh, teaching in Idaho. I taught three years in Idaho, and when I got out of college, I wanted to come to Idaho, but I didn't have the money to move up there. You know, when it, when I came up, um, I was teaching in a, in a ninth grade in Idaho, and ten of my students from one class have moved up into our town or in our area. And they they do the same thing I do. They go pan, they beach comb, they they uh, hunt, they fish. So it's it's a lifestyle we had in Idaho, but not not as extensive. The book, of course, eventually goes into the political arena. When Sarah first got involved in politics, did you ever think, wait a minute, 
huge things are about to happen here, or did you think it was just going to be a local uh, a local mayor deal? Well, when she first started, I thought she was over her head because she butted head with some very, very influential and important people. And when she kept winning, I just was very, very dismayed and and also very, very proud. And um, when she became mayor, I thought, I thought, well, that was the end of it. Then when she went for governor, I said, holy cow. And um, I think I even encouraged her to go for lieutenant governor because she was running up against an incumbent, the incumbent governor and what have you, a big name, and uh, she waxed him. <laughs> I mean, just uh, she had such a, uh, a great following, mainly because of her of sincerity and her honesty. What about little Sarah? You had a lot of fun, didn't you? Hunting together, father-daughter events, great memories there. Oh, yeah. Uh, like Chuck said, uh, they got very little television time. The television they had in the winter, even, I had in a back room with no heat. I remember when <laughs> they, they turned the television on, the, the um, uh, tube would, would condense and it would ice up. It might be 20 below in that back room. So they didn't watch that much television. And a lot of our um, television programs were tape delayed, like Monday Night Football. Uh, the, the tapes were flown up maybe on Tuesday, so um, things were things weren't quite like they are today. <laughs> and speaking of that, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what you're going to be doing here? I understand something involving the Packers. Oh, I've become a I, I became a good Packer fan in the early '60s. I was fortunate enough to play in the same uh, high school football team with Jerry Kramer, who went on as an All-Pro for several years with the Green Bay Packers in the uh, in the 60s. He made that infamous block on Jethro Pugh, if you remember, in the Ice Bowl and what have you. And um, I played quite a bit of football in high school and some in college. And Jerry made me <laughs> made me look good. He was such a good blocker. In college, I didn't have Jerry to block for me, and I didn't do that well in college. But uh, I'm still in contact with Jerry, and, uh, in fact, his brother got me a job. I, I addressed that in our book, Our, our Sarah. He got me a job in um, in the Anchorage School District. Uh, his next-door neighbor was the assistant superintendent, and just one phone call, and that's all it took. <laughs> that's amazing. I know Jerry's done a lot of NFL films uh, work over the years, commentary and whatnot sure. after retiring, and you know, guys like me being able to enjoy that ice ball who you know weren't around at the time. Uh, <laughs> but let me say, as a Bears fan, you know, we're going to oh, be we're going to be we're going to be cordial here. I will tell you this, Mister Heath. You know, Mike Ditka, of course, did come out in support of Sarah in '08. Yes, so, he did. So yes, we do did. have we do have some backers here. <laughs> from Chicago as yeah. well. Um, uh, Mike Webster from um, uh, the Steelers was a good uh, supporter of Sarah, too. He sent her memorabilia and autographed pictures and everything. But, um, yeah, Mike Ditka, yeah, he's, he's kind of a mentor uh, for me, too. Uh, I just like his style. <laughs> Writing this book, sir, was there anything you remembered that perhaps you may have not thought of again if you didn't have a book project and really had to sit down and dig in? Well, there's lots of things that we put in there, lots of stories that um, the editor uh, uh, deleted throughout. She thought it wasn't um, newsworthy, so to say, and what have you. Now, Chuck Jr. is already starting started to write another book, and a lot of these stories will be in um, in that in that book. They were very, they were very close and important to us. Now, the Heaths and Palins really have that work hard and play just as hard attitude, and that really comes across in the book. You've just had a lot of fun with your family, haven't you? Oh, yeah, one adventure after another. It's not sitting sitting around, you know, twiddling your thumb or what have you. It's go, 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 especially on the, um, like the commercial fishing, and I guided, and uh, my wife uh, camp cooked for me and, and my clients. But it's always always something. Yeah, we don't we don't sit around. I'll sit around when I'm in my wheelchair. <laughs> and you know, I could just just from your voice. I mean, we know this already, but just the way you talk. I mean, you know, you're just a proud dad of four wonderful children, aren't you? Oh yeah, they 
despite me, they've all turned out real well. <laughs> again, tour. we're crediting Sally again, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, tour teachers, uh, one's a dental hygienist, and then Sarah, well, whatever we want to call her, <laughs> politician, I guess. Yeah, they've all uh, done done a good job. Yeah. Are Are you excited for the book tour? Uh, yes, I went on the um, going rogue tour with uh, when Sarah did her. Um, tour. I think we went to 38 cities and what have you. I didn't go to the first three cities because I it just didn't seem um, interesting to me. But my wife went, and, she, and after three cities, she said, "You get back here." So I f- flew back and met them in Rochester, and it was really a highlight. Yeah, you know, really a highlight of uh, of um, the whole political scene that Sarah was involved in. The people that um, would approach her and just they would, they couldn't speak when when they went up to talk to her. The expressions on their face, oh, we were received so well nationwide. You know, thirty eight cities, twenty five states. Well, it's really a wonderful book, and and I think it just captures everything that those of us who already support Governor Palin know that it's you know it's the extraordinary part of her, but also the very ordinary part of of her and all of you, and and just a wonderful tight uh, close knit family that people can relate to, I think, in a lot of ways. Um, I do have to add, sir, uh, a bit off topic, but I have to ask you, I spoke to your son-in-law, Todd, recently about your dog, and I'm a lab guy myself. Oh, boy. Now, your chocolate lab can do some really incredible stuff. Well, he's what we call an antler dog. Um, it's supposed, supposedly it's in his genes, but you can teach a lab to do anything. But he goes out and finds and bring back, brings back uh, shed antlers. He also... I read, I read about it once, so I started training him. I'll hide money around the yard, around the house, and he has a command money, and he goes and picks up the dollar bills or whatever I, I hide around. So he's, he's just a good dog. You know, if, if, you, if you have labs, you know what I'm talking about. They're all basically the same. Well, maybe we could send him to Washington. He could find out where all the money's going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, good, good idea. Uh, I did get. I, you know, I saw when you were on the uh, television uh, program, the you know Sarah Palin Alaska, and he was on, and I said, oh, you know, if I ever talk to Mister Heath, I got to talk about this, you know, as lab people. But uh, great stuff, uh, sir. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. God bless and all the best to all the Heaths and Palins, and we're really looking forward to see how well this book does. I'm sure it's going to be a smash hit. Okay, um, our pleasure, Kevin. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Take care. Yeah, you hang in there. Chuck Heath Sr., quite a guy. Great pictures in this book, too, folks. Talk about having a cool dad. You have to see one shot of him with his motorcycle as a younger man. He looks like he's straight out of Easy Rider. The Heath kids must have really had a blast with Chuck Heath as their dad. He's obviously so very proud, for good reason, of his Sarah. The book, Our Sarah, Made in Alaska, out now and available everywhere. It's also available in audio, CD, and audio book, unabridged formats. Well, that'll just about do it for this special edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. I want to thank everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Chuck Heath Sr. And thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us next time for another edition of the Palin Update.